Okay, well, at this point, so we're going to turn things over to Paul Mori. He is actually a key contributor to many Kubernetes upstreams, and he's specifically responsible for the SIG uh, related to multi-cluster. But today, he's going to talk to us about Knative. He is one of our resident experts, and I'm very honored to introduce Paul Mori. Paul, over to you. Thanks. Uh, Burr, have you seen the short, long meme that's going around? No. The short hair, long hair meme. No, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? All right, so I can. I got a neat trick I want to share with everybody real quick which is I'm gonna do, the meme is that you show a picture of yourself with short hair and a picture of yourself with long hair. Okay. And the trick is I'm gonna do this with in the same photo. You ready? Yeah. All right, cause it's quarantine baby. So we got the short hair uh -huh. and then we got the long hair. And <laughs> since we're not going anywhere, we're growing it out on the sides, all kinds of wildness. And now we're gonna just put that away. But what's that funny though is I was I was expecting different colors. Right? It looks oh, like you're different color right now. <laughs> colors colors for normal times. <laughs> well, fantastic, awesome right, stuff. Gonna, and, I, and actually, I did this haircut me. once during the pandemic. Uh, it's time for another one. Well, I tell you what. Next time you want one, uh, we'll do a distance. I'll I'll get some clippers on like a broomstick, and I'll cut your hair. All right, All right, Paul. You can screen share, and now you're off and running. Okay. All right. Well, if folks, let's see, you can see my screen, right? Yep. Coming through. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's get this thing into presentation mode. And Bert, Bert are, we, are we running a little bit behind? Like, do I need to fit this into a shorter amount of time? No, no. You can go right up to about 11.05. Okay. Just got something in my eye here real quick. Uh -oh. All right. So uh, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, as the case may be. My name is Paul. I lead our serverless engineering teams here at Red Hat. And what we're going to be looking at today is uh, the some details of how the Knative Autoscaler works. So if you don't already know, uh, Knative is a project that is focused on uh, building blocks uh, that provide some fundamental technologies for serverless. And we make a distinction here between uh, a lot of people when they hear serverless, they think of functions as a service and uh, products like Amazon Lambda. Um, when when we talk about serverless here, we're talking about something that is uh, that is is less than that full experience that you might associate with a function as a service, and is really about enabling some core technologies and core concepts. There's two major functional areas in Knative. Uh, there's serving that's about, uh, that is really about scaling on demand uh, applications. And there's eventing, which is about working with events that are emitted by different sources and things that you might want to do with them. Today, we're really gonna focus on uh, the serving part. And specifically, we're gonna talk about some deep details of how that Auto scaling technology in Knative works. So, a couple things that uh, I want to share with everybody as we get started here uh, to kind of set the context. The first one that I'll just mention quickly is that uh, there are a number of different ingresses that are supported in Knative. Uh, for example, we got a few here on the side. Courier, that's actually was created by our three scale team here at Red Hat. Uh, Istio, which you may have heard of, Contour, et cetera, uh, are all supported. There's others, but the, the fundamental thing I want everybody to understand is that the ingress uh, implementation that you bring to provide your ingress in Knative is pluggable. Um, so just keep that in mind as we talk about some of this stuff. Um, in terms of API resources, uh, there's four that I wanna talk about. One is service. And you can think of service as just a high level container that manages some of the uh, the other resources that we're going to talk about. Uh, you can think of it like a, uh, a resource like a deployment. And service sort of brings together the spec or the intention part of two other resources that we're going to talk about. One of those is configuration. Uh, configuration is another resource that is similar to a deployment. And what configuration does is 
each time you update its spec, and, and we'll take a look at the spec of a configuration and, and spec of a service. Each time you update a service's spec in the configuration part or a configuration's spec, it creates a new revision. So each time you update this resource, it's capturing that update as a unique revision. So if I update a configuration directly or I do it via a service three times, I'm gonna get three different revisions that are immutable snapshots of what I declared in the spec. So as we update this object, we get different revisions that the route resource allows us to direct traffic to. So route is allowing us to do things like traffic splitting. Like for example, if we want to send, uh, say that in, in the steady state, we have a revision that is handling all of our traffic and we want to roll a new revision out, the route allows us to send some of that traffic to the newest revision, but keep most of it on the old one so that we can do things like test and see how the new revision is behaving before we direct all of the traffic onto it. So to just pull it back up to the service, the service allows us to declare a spec for a configuration and a spec for a route. It gives us one easy point that we can manage both those things from. And I'm just gonna escape out of this real quick and we're gonna see a demo. Um, Burr, would you let me know, please, uh, whether my font size is, is viewable? Yeah, that's yeah, good. that's good. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the, uh, the <clears throat> what I'm doing now is I'm going to run the, the KN client. It's the CLI client for Knative. Uh, and I'm going to just show a really, really simple example of creating a service uh, via the KN client. So we're going to do KN service create. Hello is the name. And we're going to use uh, uh, example Hello World Go image from <clears throat> which is one of our project samples. And we're just going to give it an uh, environment variable to let us say what the response is going to say. So since we're, we're at DevNation, we're just going to use DevNation there. So what it's doing is we've just created a service. That service has created a route and a configuration. The, com the configuration has created a revision that captures our intent, uh, like this version of our intent. And we've now got a uh, URL that we can visit to just uh, <clears throat> to hit that service. And uh, let's see if I can get that font size a little bit bigger. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's read our dev nation out of that environment variable. So it's saying hi to you. Um, let's take a look at the resources that were created. So this KSVC is our shortcut to access K services or uh, K native services. And we're just gonna see which ones we've got. <clears throat> All right, so let's do, we're gonna get the YAML for this one. Everyone likes YAML, that's what I hear, you know. Uh, And we'll just uh, sorry. So we're looking at the Knative service that we just created with this command. And a couple things I want to point out here. Um, we're looking at the object's spec right now. And you can see under spec, if you're familiar with the, uh, the deployment API, a lot of this will look pretty similar. Um, there's this one extra feature, though, container concurrency 
that talks about <clears throat> how many containers can we have going to handle requests. Um, but this is looking pretty similar to what we would expect if we were writing a deployment. So the API is very, very close to uh, the APIs that you might be uh, familiar with. And then we've got this tra traffic section that is about configuring our routes. And we can see here that we've got it on 100% uh, going to the latest revision. So if we... Uh, and Paul, uh, Paul, yes. If you could, raise your, your terminal, terminal window a little bit, because actually there's video thumbnails, thumbnails covering, covering your current, current command line. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, you can just, yeah, you can change. just change. There How's we go. that? There yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> so really quickly, we'll just take a look at the configuration that created. So we can see up here, this is a Knative serving configuration. And we'll just take a look really quickly at the spec for this. We can see this is the spec that uh, was in that service that we just looked at. We don't see anything about routes. And we'll just take a look at uh, the Knative routes really quick. So again, this is this is sort of a child resource that is created by the top level service. Um, now, here's something interesting. In the time between when I deployed this demo and now, you'll notice when I tried to get pods in this namespace that all the pods had spun down. Well, let's see what happens when we hit that URL again. And look at that, just like that, when we hit that URL again, what do you know? Our service spun back up. That's the auto scaler working, okay? Um, so let's talk about exactly what happened there. Just get back into my presentation view here. Um, we're going to kind of take a dive into the autoscaler. The autoscaler is the component that did that magic for us. There are four actors in, in the implementation of the autoscaler that I'll just quickly walk through, and then we're going to see how they work together. So the first one is the autoscaler itself. The autoscaler's job is to collect and receive metrics from the relevant components that are, uh, that are assisting the autoscaler and providing you know, functionality for different parts of the autoscaling tech. Um, so it's collecting those, it's receiving those via WebSocket in some cases that we'll talk about. And its job, uh, in addition to collecting and receiving these things is to make scaling decisions. And then finally, it carries out those scaling decisions by programming the Kubernetes API server to change replica accounts. The next one is called SKS for short, uh, or serverless services. And this is an abstraction on top of Kubernetes services that allows us to control the data flow into the revisions that we have deployed or to the activator, which we're gonna learn about in a second via its serve and proxy modes. Um, then finally, or sorry, not finally, but penultimately as the case may be, we've got a component called the activator. This is a data path component that's involved in scaling to and from zero. Uh, it also performs some capacity aware load balancing to handle bursts uh, and is involved with uh, the handoff when we scale back down to zero as well as scaling up. And finally, we've got the queue proxy. And this component is a sidecar to all of our user pods that are, that are deploying our code for our service. Um, its job is to collect metrics that then get scraped by the autoscaler, that first component that we talked about. And it also queues requests if too many reach a pod at once. Um, a quick note here, you may have noticed that I haven't mentioned APA, HPA currently. 
uh, which is the horizontal pod scale auto scaling functionality in Kubernetes. We don't currently use it. Uh, the primary reason for that is that it, HPA doesn't currently support scaling to and from zero at a GA level. Um, there's some initial treatment for scaling to and from zero with custom metrics, but it's really only one piece of the puzzle. And we're going to learn a little bit more about that. Um, just some history quick is that HPA is designed to scale based on CPU and memory metrics, requires a custom metric server to scale based on requests. Uh, the Knative community felt that KPA, which is what we call the, the auto scaling uh, pieces in Knative, were easier to follow and maintain than a flow using HPI, HPA in the steady state. And also uh, there's a critical use case where we're gonna see that being able to poke the auto scaler is important and uh, HPA isn't set up to do that currently. So with that footnote in mind, um, let's just, uh, let's handle some of these scenarios. So we already saw scaling up from zero. Let's talk about what happened. Um, <clears throat> so just to orient us, I'm not sure if you can all see uh, my cursor, but I'll do my best to kind of indicate uh, indicate where I'm at on this diagram. So the first thing that we're gonna see is the ingress. That's how our request, when I made that request from my web browser got to us and it went into the serverless service. Um, <clears throat> the, that request, when it was made, the serverless service was in proxy mode. And proxy mode means that when this request came in from the ingress, it went into the activator component. So as we, as we said a moment ago, the activator is, uh, plays a very important role in scaling up from zero. In this flow, what happens when that request hits the activator is the activator tells the autoscaler, it pushes a message to the autoscaler that says scale up from zero scale to one and uh it's connected to the auto scaler via a web socket so it's basically uh handing the auto scaler an interrupt that it has to handle the auto scaler then is programming the kubernetes api server to say we need to scale up the revision that this is supposed to go to to one the activator buffers the request while this happens and then when we've got a deployment that can serve our request, it sends that request to the user's pod. It goes through the queue proxy and hits our application. Um, Burr, since it's kind of hard to assess whether the audience is following this, can I ask you, are you following this so far? Well, I am, well I'm following it. And I think I'm actually echoing through your laptop. <laughs> but. Uh -oh. But, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, I know this stuff already. So it's hard to know how much people are, how in depth they are with Knative. You know, and right. we just don't know, right? There was actually a ton of master courses that we provided. We've done a lot of free eBooks. So hopefully most of the Demnation crowd is well-versed in Knative uh, at this point, because there's been, you know, probably a dozen presentations on it. So, yep. but I do appreciate the, the extra detail you're providing here. Okay, great. Um, so that's scaling up from zero and we'll just go through that again and try to make it real concise so that everybody can follow it so before this picture before we start going over this picture imagine we have zero pods running just like we saw a moment ago when i came uh <clears throat> when i came back from describing the api and i got the pods and they were all scaled down excuse me um so when that first request comes in we go through the ingress, we go to the serverless service. The serverless service is in a mode that sends that request to the activator. The activator is sending a message over to the auto scaler that's handled as an interrupt that says scale up. And meanwhile, the activator has the request buffered. When the activator uh, understands that a deployment's available that can service the request, it sends that request that it's been buffering onto the application. And that's what happened when we scaled up. So uh, let's talk about how these different actors in the system work in the steady state. We talked about the, uh, we talked about the, the serve and proxy modes of the SKS. 
And one of the things that I should have told you a moment ago that I didn't really complete, and good thing I've got time now, is that that final step after we do the scaling up from zero, um, <clears throat> and this is this is a little hand wavy. Uh, I hope to have a little bit more time uh, to talk about bursting, but reading the clock, uh, I'm not going to have time to go through bursting. So let's just say after we scale up from zero, it's probably good enough for now to think of that last step as being that the SKS gets put into serve mode. So if you remember, in proxy mode, the SKS sent our request to the activator in serve mode, which is what we'd expect if, you know, if we're getting enough requests to remain scaled from zero, and maybe we get a new request load that, that we can think of in, in this picture that we're going to see. Um, since the SKS is in serve mode, it's going to take a request that comes through this ingress up here in the top right-hand corner and send it directly in to a user's pod. So um, if we start getting too many of these requests, what happens is that the Q proxy metrics are going to reflect these. And remember, Q proxy is a sidecar to all of our application code. And it's collecting metrics about incoming requests, how long they take, how many uh, requests are queued. The autoscaler is scraping all of these. So uh, the autoscaler is retrieving metrics from all these queue proxies. And if they start having to queue requests and buffer requests, the decider, which is an inner piece of the autoscaler, is going to recommend uh, scaling up and creating more replicas of the necessary revision. Um, so we're just going to slide back on over to the terminal here. And uh, let's take a look at another Knative service that I've got here, which is the Autoscale Go service. This is actually using another example. Uh, and the reason that we're using examples today is that I wanted to give something that was accessible that you can pretty much follow at home. Um, so you can, you can do this very same demo if you've got an OpenShift cluster, if you've got a Minikube cluster, Kind cluster, it should work on just about anything. Uh, <clears throat> but this is, a, this is an example service that's going to allow us to pause as part of the request. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to run the Vegeta tool. And we are going to see the autoscaler in action scaling up. So in, uh, you know, do the magician, nothing up my sleeve. We got no pods running now. Let's see what happens when we start running Vegeta to give us some request load. And that's a lot of beeps. So we're going to stop that. But we can see here that... Uh, we scaled up pretty pretty fast uh, once we started slamming requests into, into our service. That gave us 10 pods. I cut it off, and let's just see how many are still running. Okay, we still got 10. We'll give it maybe a few seconds. Um, but what happened in, uh, in that moment where I turned on Vegeta, which is a tool that we used to, uh, we used to drive some load type tests in Knative, is uh, that the queue proxies for the revision that were active started queuing requests. The autoscaler was scraping them and said, hey, it looks like we need to scale this application up and gave us, uh, gave us some additional replicas. Um, so I'm going to try to just make it through the rest of this really quickly. That was steady state autoscaling. And let's talk about scaling back down. So in the flow where we're scaling down back to zero, the, the auto scaler is scraping those Q proxy metrics and it's saying, hey, we don't, we don't have any load coming into this application. It looks like we can scale down. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to scale all the way down. So it's going to program the Cube API server to say we want replicas equal to zero and once 
that is scaled all the way down, it's going to update our SKS or our serverless serv service abstraction to put it back into proxy mode, which is what is going to put the activator back on to the data path so that when that next request comes in, we'll basically be back at this flow uh, and we won't drop any requests because we're scaling all the way down before we take, uh, before we put the activator back onto the data path. So we're gonna make sure there's no drop requests. And when that next request comes in, we're gonna do this flow again, where a request comes in from the ingress, it goes back into the activator. The activator pokes the auto scaler and says, hey, it's time to scale up. Once that scale up is complete, the activator is going to take the requests it's buffered and send them back over to the user pod. So, uh, Burr, I hope I hit the timing mark. I think we've got a couple minutes for questions. We we do, but of course we severed the chat. So let's the ah chat yes, we did. But hold on, Savannah can turn the chat back on, and uh, if there is anybody here because we, we had to turn chat off. We moved people around. We sent people to Slack. Yep. And um, I'll add the link back to the Slack chat and I'll ch check the Slack chat, Slack chat. Good God, there's too many things. Uh, is Knative independent of Istio is one question. So Paul, how would you answer that one? Uh, that's a very, very good question. Um, the Istio is the initial ingress implementation that when the project was first developed was added first, but it is, it is not, uh, required. So as I said, a uh, number of different ingresses are supported. Uh, and for example, when you use Knative on OpenShift, which we ship uh, in, in something called OpenShift serverless, you will get uh, the courier ingress and not Istio. You do not need Istio to use Knative. Exactly. That's a good point. And I'll actually paste a link. Sure. Burr, I've realized something and I need to go back to my presentation because I forgot the most important part, which is the thank oh, yeah. you. Share it. If you will just allow me a moment to do the thank yous. Uh, okay. So I want to say thank you for watching this talk. I hope it was informative to you and I hope it was entertaining. I want to say uh, thank you to my teammates and all my open source colleagues for developing such awesome technology. Were you going um, to screen share when you did that? Oh, oops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I my there might be something really amazing to see here. <laughs> well, just some amazing thank yous to amazing people. Uh, let's see if I can pull that thing back up here. Okay. Can you see it? Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, so thank you for watching this talk. Thanks a lot to my teammates and my open source colleagues that developed this stuff. Uh, I want to say a special thank you to Marcus, who wrote the doc that I learned a lot about this topic from. Uh, and the link's right there. Uh, and I'll, I'll share the, the URL to these slides. Uh, I, if you found this content interesting, I'd, I'd advise you to take a look at, um, at the, that linked document. There's a lot more detail there. Um, and finally, thanks to Marcus and Evan Anderson, who created the diagrams that I used in this presentation. Thanks a lot, everybody. And thanks for having me, Burr.